Hello, this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you about a recent report in the Canadian Journal of Cardiology that addressed the modifiable risk factors for sudden cardiac arrest and the extent to which this outcome is preventable and the percentage of cases that could be averted by changes in modifiable risk factors. And there's been surprisingly little research on this subject. Um, most of the research on sudden cardiac arrest has looked at genetic factors and clinical risk factors that are managed with pharmacologic agents such as hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, and also proximate risk factors such as what the patient was doing shortly before the arrest. But there's been very little on the role of behavioral lifestyle factors in long-term uh, studies. And it's important to have this research because we know that uh, sudden cardiac arrest is highly fatal, about 90% of cases. And also in the U.S. alone, there are more than 200,000 uh, cases per year and more than double that if we include uh, total cardiac arrest inside and outside of the hospital. So the researchers leveraged the large-scale UK Biobank, which included um, more than 500,000 uh, participants. Mean age was 56, about 50% women. Overall, during a follow-up of 14 years, there were about 3,100 incident sudden uh, cardiac arrests. And they looked at about 125 uh, risk factors and linked 56 of the factors to risk of um, the SCA. And these included um, lifestyle, uh, behavioral factors, ad adiposity, psychosocial um, factors, and environmental factors. And um, what they found was that um, the Life's Essential Eight, the American Heart Association Life Essential Eight factors, were generally uh, strongly related to the risk of um, sudden cardiac arrest. So, for example, uh, sedentary lifestyle, higher adiposity, higher waist waist circumference, um, short sleep durations, such as less than seven hours a night, um, and also uh, tobacco. And there were some other factors that, that were linked that were more psychosocial, um, depressive symptoms, low mood, uh, social isolation, and um, some dietary factors as well, such as low uh, fruit and vegetable intake and um, air pollution, as, as well as several other factors. Now, they addressed the likelihood of a causal relationship by doing um, Mendelian randomization. And in these analyses, they did link about nine factors to um, to be ca causally related, and that included adiposity factors, low low fruit intake, uh, low educational level, um, and some of the um, the mood of related uh, factors. Now, overall, they estimated that between forty and sixty three percent of sudden cardiac arrests could be preventable by uh, reducing or even fully eliminating these, these risk factors. And I think the findings really underscore the importance of primary prevention, um, not only to non-fatal or total coronary heart disease and cardiovascular events, but also to uh, sudden cardiac arrest, and really uh, suggests that more could be done in terms of informing our patients about these risk factors in order to uh, lower their risk, both uh, informing them in the clinic and through community-based and um, public health campaigns. Thank you so much for your attention. This is Joanne Manson.